Here with Shea West and West Fargo. Did you know that we are open year round? Well, that's a fact. And we've got a few Christmas trees left on the lot if you're still looking. Hurry in, they're going fast. Our Ivy Room is blossoming with calendar dates for classes all winter long. Head to our Facebook page and see what's upcoming. And the Market Building is ready for all things Christmas. Gifts for everyone and your whole family. See you soon. That's Shea West Garden Center under the water tower on the corner of 40th Ave and Cheyenne Street in West Fargo. Can't miss Community it. Community focused, conservative minded. This is AM 1100 and 92.3 FM, WZFG, Dilworth Fargo, Moorhead, USA. It's four o'clock. From the WDAY News Center, this is Ty Schoenert, and it's time for your Flag News Update. News this hour brought to you by Freedom Matters USA. Due to winter weather, deteriorating road conditions, and forecasted heavy snowfalls, Mayor Tim Mahoney declared an emergency to enact a closure of all non-emergency city offices today. Snow plows are working, but all city hall departments will be closed, along with all public library locations and Fargo Cast Public Health. Map bus services began two hours late today at around 8.15 this morning. And recycling and trash were also slightly delayed, but will move on as scheduled today following the delay. As the winter storm began to move out of North Dakota, travel restrictions began to ease across the state. North Dakota Department of Transportation announced I-94 reopened from Dickinson to Fargo. The roadway has been closed since late Tuesday afternoon due to heavy snowfall and deteriorating road conditions. As for no travel advisories across the state, all have been pulled as of Wednesday morning. And the social media app TikTok no longer allowed on state-owned devices issued by North Dakota's executive branch agencies. Governor Doug Burgum signed an executive order enacting the ban yesterday. The governor cited national security concerns with the Chinese company. Governors in several states like South Dakota, Iowa, Alabama, Maryland, Oklahoma, Texas, and Utah have also taken the same step. This is Ty Schoner to the flag at am1100theflag.com. First of the news when you need to know. Okay, Fargo Force fans, listen up. The Fargo Force are back in full force. Plus, the concourse is action-packed for kids, and Shields Arena has a new rock climbing wall. Fun for all ages. The Fargo Force are back in action December 16th and 17th with the Sioux Falls Stampede coming to Shields Arena. Bring your friends and family for a great time with food and beverage specials. Get your tickets at the Shields Arena box office or at FargoForce.com. Come for the hockey, stay for the fun. Beat the clock in Congress. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. The House now debating a short-term spending bill to avoid a government shutdown Friday. It would give lawmakers an extra week to finish work on an omnibus bill for the rest of the fiscal year. Though House Republican leaders are objecting to that less than three weeks before they take control of the chamber. President Biden facing growing bipartisan pressure over the record surge at the southern border with Title 42 set to end next week. Homeland Security has been using that pandemic era rule since the Trump administration to turn away many asylum seekers. A bipartisan letter to the president says DHS is almost completely reliant on Title 42 to control migration from Mexico in the Northern Triangle. The vast majority of Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurans, and Salvadorans encountered by U.S. Border Patrol along the border in October 2022 were expelled under Title 42 rather than processed under Title 8. Democrats want answers, same as Republicans. Fox is Peter Ducey at the White House, which says it's preparing for the end of Title 42. We have been talking to Congress about uh, resources, additional resources that may be required. We have been coordinating with leaders. Uh, here at the NSC across the Western Hemisphere. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says more details to come. The Fed does what Wall Street expected, a smaller half-point rate hike to keep fighting inflation, but stocks slide anyway, as the Fed chief highlights the fine print. So this is what investors heard, and this is what came out of the statement and what we heard from Jerome Powell. Modest economic growth, more rate hikes coming, and a likely rising unemployment rate, says Fox Business's Jackie DeAngelis. And they also heard that the uh, Russian war on on Ukraine is adding some pressure to inflation, and we're not sure how long that's going to last. So you take all of these things together, and the market is trying to calculate, are we going to get the soft landing we so were hoping for? And that's why stocks retreated today, because a lot of people are uncertain about that. The Dow dropping 142. America's listening to Fox News. Dell Technologies Days of Deals for Business start now with fresh, limited quantity deals on tech to drive productivity. Save on select performance laptops and desktops powered by 12th Gen Intel Core processors. Don't forget special pricing on the latest monitors, docks, and accessories, plus free shipping on everything, and special financing with Dell Business Credit. 
Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. It's a new day because COVID vaccines just got a big update. So all the big stuff coming up this fall, well, now you can say, you bet I'll be there. Because updated COVID vaccines protect against both the original COVID virus and Omicron. And everyone five and older can get one. So this is a moment we've all been waiting for. Find updated COVID vaccines at vaccines.gov. We can do this. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. A winter weather advisory remains in effect until 6 a.m. Thursday morning. Throughout this evening and tonight, some scattered snow showers mix with a little drizzle from time to time. We'll have temperatures holding in the lower 30s with a north wind around 10 to 15. For Thursday, a winter storm warning issued as wraparound snow floods into the area. We'll have high temperatures right around 31 with a north wind 15 to 30, producing blowing snow into Friday with 4 to 8 inches of additional accumulation. From the Skywatch Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Justin Storm. Today's weather is brought to you by Summit Carbon Solutions. The ethanol industry is critical for the North Dakota economy and our farmers. Summit Carbon Solutions is opening new economic opportunities for ethanol producers and helping maintain a strong market for corn growers while generating millions of dollars in new property taxes to help local communities support our schools and hospitals. Visit SummitCarbonSolutions.com to learn how this project is driving the future of agriculture in North Dakota. Live from the PetroServe USA studio, it's the Chris Berg Show, your daily dose of truth to help set you free. We start with some breaking news. You remember the uh, kerfuffle around the Fufang project up in Grand Forks? We're all waiting for what's called a Scythius review. The Committee on Foreign Investments were like, we weren't sure if there was going to be security concerns. Fufang's associated with the CCP, China, China Communist Party. And so we're like, hey, we probably should get a CFIUS review to see if this thing's legit or not. So we spent three months, let CFIUS do the review. And then they came back. <laughs> they came back after three months. We're like, um, this is out of our jurisdiction. So we really have no comment. So we just wasted three months of everybody's time going, hey, are you going to do something about this? Because we're a little bit concerned by the fact that we're going to have a company associated with the CCP the Chinese Communist Party right next to, I don't know, an Air Force base. So does a really no decision by CFIUS give this thing the green lights? We'll find out. Coming up later in the show, the mayor of Grand Forks, Brandon Bachinski, is going to join us. But I'll also do this sort of in a dovetail from the standpoint that, you know, here we are concerned about could this potentially lose the Air Force base? What does this mean for our corn growers up in the area that sell their corn to this uh, corn milling plant? The same day, yesterday, Governor Doug Burgum ended up banning TikTok, which is a Chinese-owned social media company, TikTok from all state agency phones. He's concerned about citizen data. So I'm going to break that down for you later in the show. Some other breaking news. Federal Reserve raised rates uh, 0.5%. Basically, what does that mean for you? If you're out there thinking about getting a new mortgage, your money is going to cost you more. It's just going to be that much more expensive. I think something to also pay attention to, as I talked about today in the meeting, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, anticipate unemployment going up. We talked about that yesterday with Patrick Riley. So just be aware, probably from 3.7 to 4.6% is the projection. Just something I think, obviously, to pay attention to, because the obvious question is, when you look at these blunt tools being used by the Federal Reserve, I don't know, would you rather spend an extra 100 bucks a month on groceries and keep your job? or not have a gig and spend an extra hundred bucks on groceries. I mean, the answer seems pretty obvious to the average Joe and Jane American like myself. And yet the federal reserve is going to continue to use these blunt tools to actually increase unemployment across the country. Then at the end of the show, we've got a very special treat. So today I wrote a song about the city of Fargo, sort of, I sort of wrote it. You'll get it at the end of the show. What I'm talking about specifically, we've got a very special guest artist, that is going to sing the song that I wrote about the great city of Fargo coming up at the end of the show. So his initials are S eight. So you're definitely going to want to stick around to hear um, how well he performs a song that I just wrote earlier today, which it's fantastic. I got to say it's really, really well done tune about the city of Fargo. So we'll have some fun with that first though, as we all know, we've just been blanketed with some snow things pretty chill right now. We do want to give you a brief weather update as far as, 
uh, what happened, what to expect, and of course, for your holiday travel, which, believe it or not, is just right around the corner. Joining us now, meteorologist with WDAY and Flag Family Media, Justin Storm. Justin, welcome back. Thanks for doing this. Hey, how's it going, Chris? Glad to be here. Doing great. Just kind of give us a lowdown. Like, what were the big snowfall amounts that happened uh, overnight last night and where? Oh, man. E everywhere in eastern North Dakota got hit pretty hard with the snowfall from last night with basically an exception for Fargo. I mean, we still got a good amount of snow, anywhere from about five to seven inches within the FM metro area, eight and a half down in Horace. But as you go west and southwest, those amounts jump up pretty quickly, anywhere between 10 and 16 inches of snow, 15 and a half in Lisbon. We got 14 wow. inches in Fingal, 12 inches in Valley City, 13 and a half inches down in Gwinter, even up in the Northern Valley getting hit pretty good, anywhere from eight to 13 inches of snow, about 10 to 12 around the Grand Forks metro. The those lighter amounts were found over in Lakes Country, but not everyone got escaped. There was about two to ten inches of snow that fell around Detroit Lakes, as well as down into the uh, Wadena area in Vergas. Uh, Fergus Falls got about two inches of snow, so everyone got a good amount of snow, but eastern North Dakota definitely got hit the hardest. And unfortunately, Chris, there's quite a bit more snow on the way, so most of us at or just above a foot, just shy of a foot, most of us going to end up between one and two feet of snow by Saturday morning. For the rest of today, winter weather advisory remains in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll see a few pockets of some scattered snow showers, maybe a little bit of a light drizzle, freezing drizzle combination with temperatures holding around 32 degrees for the rest of this evening. They will slide to about 30 29 so still could see a little bit of patchy freezing drizzle throughout tonight mixed in with some snow showers wind not bad though out of the north 10 to 15 although it will turn windy tomorrow as wraparound snow floods into the eastern half of our state as well as into western minnesota we'll have Temperatures right around 31 in the morning, gradually falling into the 20s throughout the day. A north wind 15 to 30 with widespread wraparound snow. The snow will be lighter and fluffier. Winds will be stronger. We now introduce the chance for blizzard to near blizzard conditions for your Thursday. Winter storm warning is in effect for tomorrow until 9 o'clock Thursday evening. I do expect that will either be extended or an advisory will be issued into Friday. Possibly could see that winter storm warning being upgraded itself into a blizzard warning, at least for portions of our area. Snow showers will continue Thursday night into your Friday, but begin to taper off into Friday, just kind of becoming lighter and scattered snow showers. We will hang on to a northwest wind, though, gusting as high as 40 miles per hour with temperatures near 20 in the afternoon. And those snow showers really taper off by Friday evening, especially into Friday night, where this will all start to just settle down, leading into a fairly decent weekend, just a little on the chilly side. Teens on Saturday, cloudy light wind, cloudy on Sunday, mid-single digits, light wind, by the time we're all said and done by Saturday morning, Friday night, most of our area is going to see an additional four to eight inches oh. with the potential for a few localized areas to get a little bit more than that. But I'd say four to eight would be a safe bet. A couple of quick things to note. Again, if you're just joining us, Justin Storm, meteorologist here at WDAY Flag Family. One, Justin, a 6 p.m. kickoff at the Fargo Dome Friday night. What can the uh, tailgaters anticipate for weather that afternoon? By Friday night, the winds will begin to be lightening up. The snow showers will really have tapered off. So I think the worst of this is going to be Thursday into Thursday night. And then we'll just kind of have some hit or miss conditions around the area for Friday, but improving throughout the day. I would expect some slick roads, however, especially with the drifting and blowing snow. Uh, just leave, give yourself a little extra time if you got to do a little bit of distance to travel to get to that game. I'd uh, give yourself just a little extra time. You should be fine. And then real quick for people traveling for the holidays late next week, things look pretty good. Oh boy. Um, what's your definition of good? I mean, yes and no. 75 so, and sunny <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, Chris, not here. <laughs> As we head into the next week, we're keeping a close eye on a potential little clipper system coming in on Wednesday or about Wednesday. We're a week off. So timing will likely change just a little bit, but snow amounts don't look to be the most impressive from the standpoint right now, maybe a couple inches again, too far out to really have any idea exactly what will play out, but it does look like this will be packing in more wind. So, Blowing snow middle of next week will be another potential, something to keep in mind and keep up to date on the forecast. Outside of that, it's going to get cold, especially once that system passes our area where we might even see daytime highs maybe struggling to get to 10 below zero for the oh. back half of next week <laughs> into your Christmas break. So although traveling around Christmas time looks to be fine right now, you will be driving with dangerous cold and extremely dangerous wind chills where 
could potentially see wind chills <laughs> less than minus 40. Steve, do we want to sing that Fargo song now? <laughs> uh, Justin Storm, meteorologist here at WDOA Flag Family Media. Justin, amazing job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate giving us some insight. Yep, you're very welcome, Chris. Uh, I laugh because you're going to want to hear our Fargo song coming up at the end of the show. Wrote it today. You'll find that I wrote it probably in about 60 seconds, and you'll know why. And, and, and it's a legit song. Got a chorus, got the whole thing, like, it's a legit song. I'll tell you how I did that in 60 seconds coming up at the end of the show, and we'll have a special artist singing that just for you. Yeah, Chris, can I tell? Can I say that I can tell it only took you about 60 seconds to write that? <laughs> uh, with all due respect, sir. Uh, you know this what? Is, this is so bad. Really? Oh, yes. Are you thinking? Uh, I thought it was so good. I was like, oh, okay, this is. <laughs> well, maybe beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I don't know. But people are either going to laugh with us or laugh at us, one of the two. So we'll Probably the latter. Maybe so. <laughs> but, uh, but that's Steve Holster, by the way, president here of Flag Family Media. Um, you'll understand with some context why I actually thought, hey, this is pretty good. Steve, though, uh, wasn't aware of how I wrote it. And so he's like, oh, boy, this is just horrendous. So we'll, um, we'll see what you have to say about that. Uh, I want to move on to something here real quick, and this is about the Fufang Project, and Mayor Bachinski is going to join us coming up in the next segment, and it's important to give you some context of what's happening here. So Fufang, as we know, associated with CCP, the corn milling plant up in Grand Forks, many people concerned about the fact that there was land bought, you know, right next to UND, right next to the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Let me remind you, we've got Space Force there. I mean, the war right now is really in space. If you talk to Senator Kramer, he's on the Senate Armed Services Committee. He's going to say, look, you know, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yes, this whole nuke thing that Putin talk is talking about is pretty important, too. But he goes, when you understand how much farther ahead China and Russia is when it comes to space warfare than we are, you know, that's really, really important to take into account. Now, all those things are right there. And I want to remind you that we are about potentially, we'll find out from Mayor Bachensky, but potentially put a corn milling plant run by Fufang USA, which is associated with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. Please remember that as I go through some of this. Now, earlier today, uh, we did get a statement from Governor Doug Burgum. He said this about the Fufang and the CFIUS review. Hey, this has been and continues to be a locally driven project. Today's report is the result of local officials doing their due diligence with the national security review process available to them. We trust the city will continue to do its due diligence if the project proceeds. Senator Kramer, much different. He's very concerned about the Chinese Communist Party being associated with this, investing in ag in North Dakota. He has a um, classified hearing next week, it sounds like, in regards to Fu Fang. So hopefully we'll get some insight into that. I say all this because yesterday, when this news about the CFIUS review came out, also Governor Doug Burgum signed an executive order banning TikTok from our state. Oh, we're going to run out of time. I've got to play a little bit for you here of uh, Governor Christy Nome on the Hannity show recently. Uh, listen to this. worse and they're our enemy they hate us this is why it's so important that other elected officials take out please hear what she's saying china is our enemy they hate us that's why i want to play this race they also get into the piece about land here hopefully we'll have time to get get to at least some of this action as well you said that south dakota will have no part in the intelligence gathering operations of nations that hate us you said the chinese mm -hmm. communist party is using the information that it's gathering from TikTok to manipulate the american people and gather data uh, of the devices that access their platform my question is 
how do we know that's true and how deep does it go? For example, if somebody were to send me a, a TikTok and I click on it, I don't have it on my phone, would they have access to information on my, my phone right now because I click, did a click on it? We are uncovering more and more all the time that, yes, they are using that data, that they are using and even could possibly be able to go back and utilize what buttons you pushed on your phone, your passwords you use to access your bank account. So think about that for a moment. Now, you're a farmer up in the northern part of the valley. Are you going to go sell your corn to a milling plant that's associated with CCP, knowing what we just know about how they're going to mine data? I don't know. We'll talk more about this, and I'm going to play the part about the land from Christy Nome because I think it's important context as we have our conversation with the mayor of the great city of Grand Forks, Brandon Bochensky. Stay with us. Much more coming up. You heard the news. The Twitter censored conservatives big time. They also suppressed your farm and business depends on a reliable source for energy. PetroServe USA is the customer owned co op committed to being a stable source of fuel for your equipment and propane to dry your grain. We have the capacity to make sure you never run out of fuel and to keep prices stable. Dependability, competitive prices, and exemplary service. That's PetroServe USA, helping America fuel better. PetroServe USA. Call today. That zone to 39747. Let your voice be heard. I tune into Newsmax for news I can trust. And remember, vote a Newsmax poll on Trump versus DeSantis. Text zone to 39747. That's zone to 39747. And make the switch to Newsmax. I did. You'll love it. Hi, Jeff from a Cutting Edge Gallery of Jewelry. The third way you get to save this holiday season is this. The first item you picked out, any finished jewelry, you get 10% off the first piece. You pick out two pieces or more, you save 20% off of each. Now, three pieces or more, you save 30%. So you can cover Christmas, Valentine's, birthday, and anniversary all at one shot. We can even store it in our safe for you. A Cutting Edge Gallery of Jewelry. Your business has storage, but not nearly enough. You need Dakota Storage Products. They'll utilize the space you already have. They're the experts in loading docks, pallet racks, cabinets, bins, and warehouse ladders, even industrial shelving for banker's boxes and your year-end files. They've helped businesses and farmers in the region make storage space smart by helping your storage space fit your needs. Go to dakotastorageproducts.com. Dakota Storage Products, helping you store stuff smart. Did you know you could be a part of feeding the world? Earn top pay while helping farmers. Red E is a Fargo, North Dakota-based company that is helping farmers rebuild their planting and seeding equipment. They have immediate openings for mechanics to go on-site to farms and install their proven products. Enjoy fantastic benefits, incredible quarterly profit sharing, weekends at home, and more. Apply today at rede-ag.com. That's red, the letter E, hyphen, ag.com. Brr, sounds like winter out there. <gasps> did you just say? Yep, they sure did, and it's coming. Hi, I'm Matthew, owner of Fix It Forward Auto Care. Winter's on the way, and it's time to get ready, including getting new all-weather tires designed specifically for our icy winter weather. Take advantage of our current rebates and availability, and our team can have you ready for winter today. Fix It Forward Auto Care, the name you trust for car repair. Fix It Forward Auto Care. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Man, I love this song. It brings back such memories. Where the tree Hanging out in Wapaton with Grandma and Grandpa. Glisten. As Joe Biden would say, put on your record player. But, but that, that's what it was back in the day. You'd be sitting there by the record player and uh, listening to this music, the cookies, bacon. I mean, whew, that takes me back. Holy cow. Uh, welcome back to the Chris Berg Show, your daily dose of truth to help set you free. We're coming to you live from the PetroServe USA studio helping you and America feel better as you're heading by Harwood. Please stop into their 
beautiful, big, brand new PetroServe USA with a Cafe USA. So you can fill up the tummy as you fill up the gas tank as well. In a moment, we're going to bring in Grand Forks Mayor Brandon Wachensky and talk about the, the CFIUS review that basically told us nothing. So we'll find out how the mayor interprets that. Before we bring in the mayor, I just want to play for you a little bit more of this interview with uh, Sean Hannity and South Dakota Governor Christy Noem, just to set some context about um, this conversation. I know many of us have had in regards to this project being up in Grand Forks, but Here's some more of this, and then we'll bring in the wonderful mayor. The communist Chinese, through different LLCs, different groups, that they have been buying up American farmland and American ranch land, and often they're buying it next to locations that have military installations. Now, uh, we would not be allowed to buy up land in China. My question is, why are we allowing that to happen here? And doesn't it seem suspicious that often the case, it's next to the military base? Yeah, you're exactly right. They have, and they have uh, a goal to buy up our food supply chain, uh, to buy up land that could threaten our military bases, um, threaten our our able our ability to defend ourselves. Listen, I've talked about this for about 20 years, Sean, just because I've been involved in food policy. But we saw China come in, buy up our manufacturing systems, our fertilizer companies, our chemical companies. They're slowly buying up our entire food supply chain. And when we don't control our food supply, uh, when another country does, that's when they control us. Um, by purchasing land, they're gathering more and more control over us. We have a state law in South Dakota that bans them from buying, any foreign entity actually, from buying more than 150 acres. We're going to be addressing that again in January, though, in our legislative session, because I don't believe we should allow them to purchase any land or but, have long-term leases because of the threat that they face, uh, they threaten Go to the United States. Join us now, Grand Forks Mayor Brandon Bochensky. Mayor Bochensky, thanks so much for joining us here on Short Notice. I do want to get to the CFIUS review first. Just your reaction to what you heard there from Governor Christy Noem. Yeah, I think North Dakota's done a good job, too. We've got a state law where they, they can't, uh, the Chinese, uh, can't, actually no foreigners can buy land um, and use it to farm. They can put industrial projects down. That's kind of where we've drawn the line in our state. And looks like South Dakota is trying to go a step further. So let's talk about the CFIUS review. I mean, they spent three months and basically it was just like, yeah, no, nothing we, you know, nothing to see here. Essentially, this isn't our jurisdiction. How did you interpret this CFIUS review? Well, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's a little disappointing. I mean, it's, it's, I suppose it's kind of what you expect out of the, the federal uh, government, unfortunately, at times. Uh, taking that long, at the end of the day, it, um, you know, CFIUS is there to vet these business transactions for national security purposes. Uh, they've got parameters that they follow that, under the law, they view as a national security risk. Those are covered transactions. Under that law, they didn't view this as a covered transaction. They didn't view it as a security risk, so they didn't continue going forward and said they had no jurisdiction. So under that law and what's currently set up, um, they decided that they didn't have jurisdiction and it's not covered. So after reading that whole long letter, that's basically what I took out of it. <laughs> I feel for you having to read that kind of stuff. It's just like, this. it's got to be painful. I So the most important thing for the people here in our area, does this letter, because Fufang USA, I think, is interpreting as, hey, great, this thing's greenlit, let's go. Do you read it the same way that now this project is greenlit and it's good to go? Well, we've got, I mean, there's a lot more environmental and a lot more things, you know, through this process. And I kind of view it as it's a snapshot in time. You know, right now it's it's essentially got approval, at least from that CFIUS thing, by not acting. Um, but certainly, if you know, if things uh, deteriorate between, uh, you know, the Chinese government, our relationship there, or something changes and something's found, it can certainly change. Uh, you know, the city is going to get back to doing what we're doing, um, looking at the, the environmental factors, the air permitting, the uh, wastewater, the water supply, uh, the things that we traditionally do. Um, we're going to get back to focusing on those. You said something that caught my ear, and that is if the relationship between China and us deteriorates. I mean, when you look at the origins of COVID, the lack of transparency, I mean, what they've done from uh, the supply chain, like how much more would it need to deteriorate before you say, okay, we got to pull this project? Well, you need some guidance federally. I mean, we've got thousands of Chinese businesses here. We've got thousands of U.S. businesses in China. We've got a lot of assets that are held on both sides. I, I do think there's a benefit to that that gives us a chance to hold them accountable. Um, you know, I don't know what the trigger point is, but certainly, you know, the federal government needs to make that decision. So I don't know if you studied, you know, foreign relations or foreign political science at UND while you were also putting the puck in the net, but I got it. My heart goes out to you because 
I'm going to read you the statement from Governor Bergam, and I just want to get your take on it. He says, hey, this has been and continues to be a locally driven project. And today's report is the result of local officials doing their due diligence with the national security review process available to them. We trust the city will continue to do its due diligence if the project proceeds. Um, I mean, do you ever feel, and, and I, this is probably a hard answer, a hard question for me to answer, but do you ever feel like, hey, man, I'm a little over my skis here as a city mayor trying to deal with national security issues? Well, it's been, I mean, that's been the same thing that, that Senator Kramer said, too. This is this is a local decision. To me, you know, if it's, an, if it's a national security decision, then that needs to be made by the people that have the information in the classified briefings. If, if you're going to leave that to the city to make those decisions, um, then you need to give us the information if, you, if it's out there. So uh, it, is, it has been frustrating, you know, certainly, uh, you know, outside of, uh, you know, spending a, a lot of time living over, overseas and, and, and trying to do my best to sort through this. I think we've just managed to, to try to be objective and, and let the process play out. Um, and it's been a year now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this. I think uh, the other thing that Senator Kramer suggested is, hey, if this project does go through, you know, we could potentially could lose the Grand Forks Air Force Base. So if it comes down to that kind of decision for you, do you choose Fufang or the Air Force Base? Well, we choose the Air Force 100 or Air Base 100 percent. That's never been a question, but we need some concrete information. I, that's never been directly communicated to us. It's kind of been danced around. We've got base uh, consultants. Uh, we're talking, you know, all the time. Um, that would never be a, a choice, you know, and then you get back to the, the, the thing with Cirrus Aircraft. Tell us how this is different so we can understand. Um, but that hasn't been communicated to us. It seems like it's uh, it's been danced around, and uh, that just adds to the frustration. Yeah, I, I, I can understand and appreciate your pain. So um, what's next for the people of Grand Forks, for the people of the Red River Valley? You know, what's what are kind of the next steps in your eyes so people can sort of anticipate what's going to happen? Yeah, there's not. I mean, no construction's really planned for the next uh, couple months. Uh, we had that, you know, basically put on hold. We'll, we'll continue to uh, go through the development agreement, and it's, you know, in the end, this is really council-driven. But uh, for now, we're going to, uh, you know, focus on those environmental factors and, and keep our eyes wide open. I don't know what else we can do. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, um, and just so people understand, what what is the economic development piece of this? I mean, what does this project potentially mean from an economic standpoint for the city of Grand Forks? Uh, you're roughly talking about 700 total all-in jobs, high paying. You're, you're going to see a, uh, roughly a property tax. Uh, once it's at full rate, you could probably see a, a reduction of, uh, it's going to be about a $6 million payment, which could reduce overall taxes by, you know, 5 to 7% for the current people that are here. Obviously, a basis increase for corn. Um, all the benefits that a corn mill, any corn mill would bring, uh, you just got the, the factor that it's China that, that makes everything, um, you know, harder. So thank you for reminding me because I was going to ask you this question and I forgot. So you look at Governor Doug Burgum um, banning TikTok on state phones and he says, hey, and this is what's in his, his EO, his executive order. Which it's, it's really important that we protect cyber infrastructure and citizen data is a critical function of state government. He's concerned about the risk of citizen data. If you're a corn grower knowing that this Fufang corn milling plant is associated with the CCP and we know how they mine data, are you selling your corn to this Fufang plant? Well, 30% of our corn is already shipped to China. So I, I guess I'm not sure what that, you know, how that affects it. I did have a talk with the governor yesterday. He was talking about TikTok. I'm not a TikTok user. I, it's not, I don't think anyone in government should have it on their phone. They should be working quite frankly, but I think it's trying to sort out, you know, the technology and this is, you know, this is continues to evolve. Where are we sort of, at, which what what are we banning? What are we not banning? Uh, and, and certainly the federal government needs to give more guidance. So you're not uh, a, a municipal mayor trying to sort through all this. Yeah, no, man, my, my heart goes out to you there. So I've got 30 seconds, Mayor. Some good news is that also, by the way, you've got a soybean soybean plant coming in at $400 million. So if this wasn't taking all the oxygen out of the room, we'd be talking about the good news as well. So in 30 seconds, tell us about that. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Uh, that's going to be a $400 million project. You know, similar benefits with jobs, property taxes that are going to be, a, it's going to be a huge influx of property tax, which is great. Uh, the great thing is the state of Minnesota had uh, biodiesel requirements for renewables um, that they couldn't even fulfill in their own state. So this company had to move over here because of the, the permitting and the, the regulatory environment. So we stole it from Minnesota. And uh, quite happy to report on that. It's kind of like the, the, the Hawks beat the Gophers, right? <laughs> on the yeah, ice. Way, that's all I got left <laughs> these, these days if they can't get on the ice anymore. Mayor Wachinski, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate the insight. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Take thank care. Thank you.
Love the fact he's listening to the people. You heard him several times drop the line about property taxes. So you know that that's the argument up there. Stick around. We come back. Some stuff you need to know for the holidays right after this. Your farm and business depends on a reliable source for energy. PetroServe USA is the customer-owned co-op committed to being a stable source of fuel for your equipment and propane to dry your grain. We have the capacity to make sure you never run out of fuel and to keep prices stable. Dependability, competitive prices, and exemplary service. That's PetroServe USA, helping America fuel better. PetroServe USA. Call today. Urologist Justin Storm. Hey, Flag listeners. Spencer Brand here from Media Shack LLC. Do you want to get started on your project today? All your business branding needs, including but not limited to signs, embroidery, screen printing, custom apparel, banners, vehicle decals, wide format printing, and much more. And we do it all in house. If you can dream it, we can do it. Contact us today, Media Shack Fargo at 701 612 9363. And ask for Carson or online at MediaShackFargo.com. Do you have money in the bank or the stock market? Do you check the balance often? Why wouldn't you do the same for your biggest asset, your home? If you want to know right now what you could sell your home for in this hot market, go to FargoHomeValues.com. Type in any address and find out instantly. You might be surprised how much you could get for your home. Again, that website is FargoHomeValues.com. Or call me, John Nosala, for a personal valuation. Find out more at jkpropertypartners.com. Do you suffer from stiff, achy, chronic knee pain? Have you been told you have arthritis? Is knee pain keeping you from enjoying your favorite hobbies? If so, the next 60 seconds could change your life. Please listen carefully. If we find you're a candidate for our unique approach, we'll do a trial treatment, and day one, you will know without a doubt if we can help you. Pick up the phone right now and call 701-353-2230. And best of all, we may be able to reduce and even eliminate your knee pain without pills, shots, or surgery. But due to limited capacity, you must call now at 701-353-2230. Hurry, call now to find out if you qualify for our program that is changing lives and helping people save time, money, and agony. Call now at 701-353-2230. You have nothing to lose, so call right now. As most of us know, a key part of going farther in life begins with making the right choices. At Starian Bank, we're proud to help you by offering a variety of accounts to choose from. All our checking accounts provide ways to avoid monthly service charges and smart digital tools to access your money your way. And if your credit history requires a fresh start, we have an account for that too. Open a new account in four minutes at StarianBank.com. No matter where life takes you, go farther with the personal checking choices at Starian Bank. Member FDIC. Are you wine curious or maybe you're a wine connoisseur? Come join us at Cellar 624 for our Wine Wednesdays from 4 to 8 because you'll have a fun time out and enjoy some beautiful wines. Bring your friends, make it a date night for fun and fine wine at Cellar624.com. Wine Wednesdays from 4 to 8. Find out more by going to Cellar624.com and reserve your spot at Cellar624.com. Come join us for fun and fine wine. Are you interested in swapping stories over a good card game? Would you enjoy having three hot meals a day? Would it be okay with you if someone did your dishes, laundry, and helped manage your health concerns? For over 125 years, the Veterans Home has been providing quality care for veterans and their spouses. You were there for us. Now let us be there for you. Call us at 701-683-6500 or visit ndvh.nd.gov. This ad is sponsored by the North Dakota Cares Coalition and aired in cooperation with the North Dakota Broadcasters Association and this station. Steve is crushing it on the tunes today. Thank you very much, Mr. Holstrom. Welcome back to the Chris Berg Show, your daily dose of truth to help set you free. Uh, thank you for the phone call that came in. I want to remind you, you can call into the show anytime. Like This is the fastest hour in radio. Whoosh. Time flies when you're having fun. So I'm not always great about giving out the numbers as judiciously as I should. So the number for you, you can put in your phone, 701 271 1100 again 701 
271 1100. We had a great call that came and said, Hey, it would have been great if uh, Mayor Buczynski would have taken some phone calls. I think he would have. I didn't run that by producer Chris Larson, who booked him. I think he would have been more than happy to. We just had him for the one segment today. And you obviously instigated a great idea where we should probably bring Mayor Buczynski back and do some sort of radio town hall with him and uh, let him take phone calls about the Fufang project, property taxes, as well as uh, this big soybean plant that's going to be taking place up in Grand Forks as well. So there's some good news happening there, <clears throat> and then maybe some news where like, eh, I don't know, I don't know about this this Foo Fang deal. Also, want to say thank you so much to Red Wing Shoes. Check out RedWingShoes.com for sponsoring our studio email inbox. You can email us anytime. Studio at ChrisBergShow.com. Again, Studio at ChrisBergShow.com. I don't know about you, but the last couple of years have been stressful. So I'm embarrassed to admit this, and it's the truth. Like, I have not done anything for Christmas yet. And not that I'm typically good about that, but I mean, I just, it's been really, really bad. I've had a ton going on. My brain bandwidth has been elsewhere. And I know when I start to think about Christmas, and if you're anything like me, just you get stressed, right? Like, overwhelmed with stress about, like, oh boy, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? Um, so, if you're like me, I thought, gosh, it'd be great to bring in a special guest today to talk a little bit about what can we do to help. Maybe mitigate the holiday stress. Maybe you've got a bunch of in-laws coming over. <laughs> maybe you have maybe you have a real Uncle Eddie. <laughs> is that real tomato ketchup? Sure is, Clark. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know what you have going on for your holidays, but it can be Without stressful. Time. So joining us today, Dr. Alla from Siraset of Fargo. Dr. Alla, great to see you on great, Merry, great. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's a great, great intro. intro. Love that. Thank you very much. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, because we, we kind of touched on this last time you and I visited. I thought it was a really powerful conversation where, you know, anxiety is a mirage, but I still, I still have it. I've been dealing with it, you know, for the last few days. So even though I know it's a mirage, I still have it. Stress is sort of a, a point of view, a perspective. Even though I know that in my brain, I still have it. So how do I mitigate it? Well, you need to decide, Chris, and each of us have to decide if the level of anxiousness or anxiety or however you're going to describe it is based upon maybe something that's in your future that you don't know the outcomes are going to be. Maybe your anxiety is that you are looking retrospectively at something that has happened and you're trying to facilitate how to figure that out. And maybe you're just, um, you've been in that loop for a long period of time and your brain will wire itself hard, wire itself to whatever you keep replaying in your thought process, whatever you keep putting your attention on. So the question is, are you feeling that because you just have more on your plate and less energy to put towards it? There are so many reasons. And I think the main reason is to identify for yourself, what are your boundaries? You know, give yourself some boundaries and say, this is the amount of energy I'm going to place in this, in, in this direction of my life. And this is the amount of energy I'm going to place upon my kids and become very, very uniform and predictable every day with doing that, trying to build the muscle of assigning and allotting. The only energy you have in the day is based on your restful nights of sleep and the fuel that you have in your body. If those are compromised, you're probably going to show up with anxiety in some format because your brain is not fed. And it's not rested. All those things I get and they sound great, but it's the holidays, right? So it there's a the little holidays. added piece of this. And my, my point is, is, you know, we all know that the real reason for the season, at least for me, is to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But sometimes I feel like I can't just text somebody and go, hey, my bad, been super busy, didn't get you probably what I wanted for Christmas because the real reason is to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Like some people are like, oh, okay, Berg, but. Yeah, They're like, on, right? what? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, so you have to I, reach I, into your Santa hat, Chris, or into your Santa bag. And you got to put I, on the hat that you have to put on for that specific, you know, play that you have to make. So you may have to put on your baseball cap because it's your best friend. You may have to put on, uh, you know, your chef hat because everybody's coming to my house for dinner. And you, you have to take all these rules on when it is is how a lot of people do their life. But it's wear the only hat you have. And that's just your own mind. You have to identify for yourself. Why are you putting so much emphasis on things that really aren't going to make a difference in anybody's life other than, you know, maybe cause more, more anxiety for them. If everyone's all over the place, as we all have, have been during the holidays, I would say 
that the best way to handle the holidays is to truly do what you want to do, keep people informed on what you want to do. Don't fall into a default like you always have. You know, be transparent with, listen, we're going to come visit for a short while and then we're out of here. Good. Let people know. And I think that we don't do that well. And I don't know how serious it's going to fit into this, but I think there's also the important piece about there's always families that have those holiday situations. By the way, if you're just joining us, Dr. Olive from Cirrus out of Fargo doing incredible, incredible things to help mitigate anxiety, depression, get better sleep. If you've got young kids that might be thinking about, because it's happened a lot now, <clears throat> where doctors are suggesting to put them on pharma, um, Cirrus may be a solution to that as well. But there's always those families where you're like, oh, man. Like, for example, Uncle Eddie's going to be there. You know, right. we had a big blowout last time. I don't want to see Uncle Eddie, but I got got to go. It's my mom. Like, How do you suggest dealing with that? Seriously, 100 percent. Yesterday I was in the Plymouth office working with our new uh, tech coach and we had seen some clients that were in for tune ups that had been in our Fargo office and they were already feeling the effects of the season. And they knew that there were going to be times of confrontation because some siblings don't get along with the other siblings and grandma and grandpa are falling ill and they want to accommodate everyone. And they're like, before I go into the holiday season, I want to sit down in that chair and I want my brain to relax because I know when I'm in my best, if you will, version of me, because I am in a state where my I'm thinking clearly and when I can preserve energy and when I feel like the stressors that come my way, I can roll a lot of them away. And then, of course, my mood improves when my brain relaxes and I get a deep restful night of sleep. And so they were just thrilled to be in the Sirisep process this week in Plymouth because they have experienced the entire process in our Fargo office and are like, I'm going to go through the holidays smoothly. So that's what I would suggest, Chris. So how do I do that? Do I just give you guys a call and find out if it's yeah. the right kind of fit for me or what? what exactly. Do I do? We need to establish whether Sirisa is the next best step. Of course, there's a history that every human being carries, and it is important for us to understand where you've been in your journey so that we can qualify and quantify whether the Sirisa process is the next best step. And we call that the Sirisa intro, where you come in, we ask you, of course, some questions as it is in any type of uh, exchange where you're trying to understand what the client's goals are. And then we have you sit in a chair. We place sensors on different portions of your scalp. They're only reading information. They don't do anything to you, but they do extract information about what is your brain doing in that moment in time. We can then see the patterns that the brain has set up in light of whatever it is that you may be going through, you've gone through, or are preparing to go through. And that will then give us a baseline of your emotions and a baseline of your, what we call the autonomic nervous system, how you may viscerally feel. Some people feel anxious in their thoughts and some people feel anxious in their body. When those, if, when we get that information, Chris, we're able to advise if the Sirisep process is the next best step and whether that brain needs a little bit of an opportunity to see itself in the real time that the technology Sirisette actually is able to offer you. Great stuff. Dr. Ola, thank you so much for joining us talking about how to uh, mitigate holiday stress. If you want to give him a call, it's very easy to do. Just dial 701-566-5231. Again, that's 701-566-5231. Three, one. Dr. Alla, Merry Christmas. Have a great Merry holiday Christmas. season. We'll talk to you soon. All the best to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, all right. Stick around because we've got a very special something in store for you. Um, you may not know this about me, but apparently I can I can write a pretty good tune. At least that's my interpretation. Steve may disagree with that. So we'll see how that plays out because Earlier today, I'm going to share with you how I wrote a song in 60 seconds, and it is incredible. Everybody's talking about this, so when I bring it up, you're going to be like, oh, now I know how Berg did that. So you're going to find out how I wrote a song about the city of Fargo in literally about 60 seconds. Now, the beauty is the president of Flag Family Media, Steve Hallstrom. Oh, and maybe even Scott Hennig, because he just walked in the studio. I don't know if we can recruit him to do this, but I do know that Steve Hallstrom is going to sing this new song about Fargo. And are we going to get a, uh, like a nice little chorine duet from Scott Hennig and Steve? <laughs> Scott's looking at me like, Bert, I can't believe I just walked in at this time. <laughs> oh, my gosh, my gosh. 
All right, stay with us. Steve Hallstrom singing a song I wrote about Fargo. Coming up right after this. <laughs> Christmas presents, countryside's covered with snow. If you've had COVID-19 or some strain of it, you've most likely experienced cognitive dysfunction, otherwise known as brain fog. Hi, I'm Dr. Alo Asiraset, and I'm here to tell you that it is real. Brain fog isn't a medical or scientific term. It's a term used by individuals to describe how they feel after COVID. Sluggish, fuzzy, downright exhausted. For some, the brain fog lasts up to eight months. Siraset has helped others, and we can help you. Siraset, relax, rebalance, reset. Did you know that periodontal disease is the number one health problem in small animal patients? Hello, I'm Dr. Calderwood, a veterinary dental practitioner at Prairie Winds Veterinary Center. By two years of age, 80% of dogs and 70% of cats have some form of periodontal disease. If you notice a change in your pet's playful habits, breath, or facial swelling, there's a chance that your pet is suffering from mouth pain. Prairie Winds Veterinary Center can help. Call us at 701-356-5600 or learn more at prairiewindsvet.com. North Dakota is a special place. Oil and gas supports more than 60,000 jobs in the state of North Dakota. And the industry is vital to our economy, adding nearly $4 billion in state and local tax revenues. Why would we buy oil from dictators when we have it right here? We produce it the cleanest, the greenest of anywhere in the world. Keep creating great jobs and right here in North Dakota. We support North Dakota oil and gas. Paid for by American Experiments, North Dakota. AmericanExperimentND.org. Living this simple life, what does that mean? Broughton Cabinets knows. Their designers understand that some families want simple, clean, uncluttered kitchens. Yet they also realize that your coffee maker, smoothie blender, and bagel toaster all need to be easily available, yet cleverly hidden. Relax. Broughton Cabinets has been building custom cabinets for almost 50 years with the Broughton Promise, quality that stays on budget. Visit their new showroom on the I-29 Frontage Road, south of Fleet Farm. Ever see a piece of land and say, I wonder if that's for sale? There's someone who knows. Jost Investments. Land development is what they do in the tri-state area, working with buyers and sellers and all the entities needed to get the deal done. Land acquisition is big in the region, and Jost Investments is securing wanted land for many companies and selling land for many owners, putting together the right deal for everyone. And they can offer land options you may not even be aware of. Call Scott Jost today. Jost Investments. Food, football, and fun. Tailgaters brings it all together with their all-you-can-eat lunch buffet from 11 to 2 weekdays or dinner and an ice-cold beverage after work. Tailgaters is the place. There's no better place to watch football on Saturday and Sunday either. Every game day, get their never-frozen, fresh-made, half-pound burgers with fries for just $10.99. Domestic pints and bottles, just $4. And Sean Mitzel will be live at Tailgaters this Friday night at 7 o'clock. Corner of Maine and University, downtown Fargo. Tailgaters. Steve Hallstrom, everyone, right there. Steve Hallstrom, he's got some chops. <laughs> we'll see if that bears out to be true. Welcome back to the Chris Berg Show, your daily dose of truth to help set you free. I want to say thank you so much to Red Wing Shoes for sponsoring our studio email inbox. If you're someone out there working hard, maybe you're out in the snow, you know, it's slushy out, and you need some really just tough work boots but they're customized for your feet. So you feel great. So you're out there working hard. They're, they protect your feet, protect your ankles, but yet they're customized to you. So you can go out there and work and like your feet are like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So check them out at three zero zero three main Avenue in Fargo. Again, that's three zero zero three main Avenue in Fargo. Say hi to Teresa and she'll do a great job at taking care of you. All right. So the song I wrote about Fargo, this is, it's amazing what's happening in tech. I'm sure many of you out there have heard about this thing. It's called Chat GPT. It's this new open AI chat bot. Many people are saying that this is going to destroy Google. Like Google's done in maybe two to three years as the, at the rate that this open AI chat bot is doing stuff. I mean, doing homework for kids. And so I thought, well, let's have some fun today. So I went into this open AI chat bot. And all I did is I said, write me a song about Fargo, North Dakota. That was it. Like one little line took me about 10 seconds and within probably about, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds, 
it spit out a bunch of lyrics that Steve Hallstrom is going to take a swing at and see if we can, uh, if he can carry a tune. So, so Steve, are you, are you, <laughs> I, I commend you. Like I would have said no way. And Steve's like, yeah, sure. I'll do this. So uh, I'll do anything, uh, make a fool out of myself for any good cause. You know that. And, uh, if I can entertain you uh, and maybe, uh, you know, the, the, the millions listening. So I walk into the studio today, Chris says, Hey Steve, can you sing? I'm like, <laughs> Uh, where is this going? I mean, the answer is yes, right? Everybody can sing. It's just a question of, does anybody want to hear it? So you give me these lyrics and I looked at it and I said, Berg, this is the most awful thing. <laughs> like me singing would be enough to drive ratings uh, down through the ground, but me singing plus these lyrics, I thought it was going to be really tough, but I have found a little melody that I think may actually make this somewhat palatable. To wow. the masses. Yes. So, um, you were talking about the bison game coming up. Big, big game on Friday night, right? So I'm going to sing this to the uh, tune of the yellow and the green that they uh, the, kind of the North Dakota State School song. Genius. Gen you know what? Can we make sure we record? Let's give you like a one, two, three Please pause no. to record Gosh, this no. so we can put it out on social. No, I'm running the board today, so the answer is no because <laughs> I'm not going to allow this to happen. So, okay, so you, you might have heard of the song uh, Green and Yellow. A cheer for green and yellow, yellow and the green. Okay, so here we go. Here are the lyrics that Chris gave me to the tune of the green and yellow. <clears throat> In the heart of the Midwest, there's a city that stands tall, where the prairies meet the rivers and the skies are big and wide. It's a place of hardworking people with a friendly, welcoming vibe, where the winters may be cold, but the hearts are warm inside. Wow, that was incredible. I would have never pulled that tune out of it, and you just did that on your own. Well, I I, I, uh, I freestyle a little on the weekends, you know. Do you want me to do the, the chorus with you on this so one? So here's the thing. The chorus doesn't quite fit that little rhythm or cadence or whatever. So I don't know how we would do the chorus with uh, this. But, um, you want yeah. me to jump in as a background singer? Let's for do you? it. Yeah. All right. Give me back. anything, buddy. Give me a give me a beat. Oh. Fargo, Fargo, our beloved city. Where the, the winds, winds may blow, blow but the spirit stays, stays strong. strong. Fargo, Fargo, a diamond in the rough. We may be small, but we're mighty and we've got a lot of heart. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoever invented the radio is turning over in his grave right now. No, this is beautiful. We, we, so. we've, we've gone from the yellow and the green to uh, like some <laughs> to Kanye Ice West. Cube, or, yeah. oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so seriously, you can just plug in like I want a song about Fargo and it'll well, create some. Lyrics. So I've got the chat put up. So just give me anything and I'll put it in and we'll see what it says. Like you can just anything you want to know or a script or a song or whatever. Um, uh, golfing. Uh, I would say Tom Hoagie golfing because he won the tournament on Sunday. Tom Hoagie golfing. Let's yeah. see what it spits out here. Twitter will tell us now about Tom Hoagie golf. Boy, there's so much data out there on him. Tom Hoagie is a professional golf who plays on the PGA Tour. He's been a professional golfer since 2012. He's mm -hmm. had several notable achievements in his career, including winning the 2020 Shriners Hospitals for Children Open. Mm -hmm. He is known for his consistent play and strong performances on the tour. So it's amazing. Like people are doing homework on it. Um, it's just a really incredible, incredible tool. So that didn't make a song out of Tom Hoagie though, did it? What oh, you, you want me to make a there? song? Okay. Well, that's what I thought we were doing. I'm sorry. What write a there song was... about Tom Hoagie that's and what I thought we were doing. golfing. I'm sorry. I just was doing like a search on him. So I'll give you some lyrics. This is going to be fun. Let's see what it comes up for with um, some lyrics on a song on Tom Hoagie. And let's see what how it, how long it takes it. Oh my gosh, we've got different verses. It's spitting out right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Tom Hoagie, golfing pro on the greens. He's the man to know. Swinging his <laughs> club with precision and grace. He's a master of the game. No one can keep up the pace. I'm not going to sing it, but it's spitting out these lyrics. And then the chorus is Tom Hoagie. Oh, he's going to love this. Tom Hoagie, golfing king. On the course, he's everything. Driving, oh putting, chipping, too. There's nothing he can't do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It's like a bad freestyle is what it is. Oh, brother, man. Uh, wait, hold on a second. I've got RC Records calling me right yeah, now. <laughs> they're saying, please stop singing. 
Uh, I don't know what this was today. We're going to call it the Chris Berg show and we're going to do it again tomorrow. So please join us at four. I love you. Have a great day. Stay safe on the roads. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Bachensky, Mayor Bachensky next week, Wednesday, town hall.